From time to time, I come across distributions that are, how shall we say, unknown to me. And that shouldn't surprise anybody, because there's like 5,000 different distributions out there. Maybe exaggerating a little bit, but there's definitely a lot. There's no way anybody could know all of them. So, every once in a while, I go to DistroWatch, our favorite website, and I take a gander through the new releases. And every once in a while, I'll come across a distro that just makes me ask, What the f*** is that distro? Why does this exist? What is it? I get very curious. So today, the distribution that caught my attention is a distribution called Slacks. Now, what Slacks is, is apparently a live ISO Linux distribution, meaning that it's meant to be run on a USB key, and it has persistent media so that you can actually run and use the USB key as if it was your your hard drive. So we're not actually be installing this today at all. As far as I'm aware, you can't install it. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. We're going to find out. But its purpose is to be ran from a live environment. So that's what we're going to do today. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the website. Now, usually when I do these WTF videos, the website is not great. A lot of times, it's just SourceForge. But this is actually a very nice looking website. This looks really well put together. And there's a lot of actual documentation on here. There's a lot of different descriptions on there. And there's a list of packages. And there's a change log. And it's a really well put together website. Now, if we go up here to the start slacks, we'll actually get an entire page of stuff that will tell you how slacks is meant to be run. All the way from maintaining persi persistent changes to the boot options that it offers and so on and so forth. Now obviously if you're running this from a CD, the, persi the persistent changes won't work because you're not using writable media. Even if you're using like an RW, that's not the way this stuff really is meant to be working. But if you're using a USB flash drive, you can use this as a persistent media tool and that means you don't install anything, you just boot into it, do your work, shut it down properly, mind you, and it should save all of the changes you made during that session. So that's really cool, right? It's something like Tails or Cubes or something like that, which is meant to be used anonymously. Now, one thing that you don't see on this all that much is actually the use of that re rationale. It doesn't say, hey, this is an ultra private distribution. It doesn't say anything like that. I mean, I'm sure maybe it is. I'm not, I'm not doubting that it's meant to be private and all that stuff, but it's not what it's for. Instead, it's supposed to be ultra lightweight in terms of resources and programs so that you can carry around a full-fledged Linux distribution in your pocket. That sounds cool. So I could go through and read this stuff you know, on camera, but that sounds boring to me. I will leave a link to the website as usual down in the video description. Instead, let's go see if we can get this thing to run. So let's go ahead and go over to Vert Manager, hit begin installation, and we'll see if we can get this thing to go full screen. And here we go. And this is what Slacks look like. So we have even, we have a, a start menu. Now, I am not actually sure what desktop environment this is or what it's based on. I have no clue. So we're going to have to investigate that. We're going to have to look and see what software is here and so on and so forth. And uh, as we can see, there is actually no way of installing this as far as I can tell. Now, also, this right here looks like all the programs that are installed. There's, what, five there and three there. That's eight. And one of them is a terminal. So this looks like VS VLC. And that, yep, that's VLC. So it's actually going to install that. So it's not even installed out of the out of the box. It's just there. Now this is based on Debian 11. Now I should mention that this ISO that I downloaded is a release candidate. So if we see bugs, it's meant there. It's meant to be buggy. It's a release candidate. So I'm not going to get after it for there being bugs. It's just the way it's supposed to meant to be. So that was, I mean, it ran it. It opened it. That was pretty cool. A lot of times with these smaller distros, I expect things to kind of be half-assed. That wasn't half-assed. That was really good. So that was that's the VLC. I wonder if they're all kind of like that. Now, I'm assuming the terminal actually is just a terminal. This is X term. So let's do U name dash A. See what kernel we're running. We're running 5.10, typical Debian 11 fare. And then we can go through and see if NeoFetch is installed. It is not. So we can. So the cool thing here is we do sudo apt install NeoFetch. And now we can run NeoFetch. 
and we have NeoFetch. Now, we don't have a custom ASCII, or and it doesn't actually say that this is Slacks. It just says it's Debian. We have kernel 5.10, as we saw. We have 633 packages installed, which if you've ever used Debian before, you'll know that that number is really low. I mean, like, really, really low. This is the Fluxbox window manager. That's why I didn't recognize it, because this is the absolute best I've ever seen Fluxbox look. Like, this is an amazing-looking window manager, and usually Fluxbox, like, the MX version of Fluxbox is... And I'm sorry, MX, I love you, but your Fluxbox themes are really bad. They're old, and they don't look good. So this is Fluxbox with the Slacks team theme. This is X term, as we said. So not a lot here. There's no way to install it, as far as I can tell. You're not meant to install it. This is just the way it is. So unfortunately, I don't know how I'm going to test the persistence, because I'm not using this on a USB key. I'm using this in a virtual machine, and... Uh, the ISOs in a virtual machine aren't writable. Usually the writable part is the hard drive. So I'm not sure how I'd go about testing that. I'm sure there's a way. This is just pure ignorance on my part. So I won't be able to test the persistence part of this, which is actually kind of disappointing because I was actually kind of looking forward to that. So I'll have to test that off camera and see if I can go through and uh, use it on a USB key. But I won't be able to show that on camera. So as a browser, we get what looks to be Chromium and it's going to install it. So one of the reasons why that package count was so low is because the stuff that it says it's actually the stuff that says it's actual here is not actually installed what text editor do they want us to install and stuff so this is sci te i've never heard of that before like in my entire life so that's a that's a text editor that i've never heard of before but that's already installed we, and we do have chromium here installed now i wish now i wish instead of chromium we had the option for firefox but apparently, you can't even install Firefox. I tried to install Firefox, so sudo apt install Firefox, and it just says there's no installation candidate there. Probably you could go through and enable other repositories if you wanted in order to get Firefox. I wonder actually if Firefox ESR is here. Yeah, Firefox ESR is here. That's this. It's Debian. I always forget that, that Debian doesn't have the regular Firefox binary. It's just the ESR mode. So now we have Firefox installed, and that even appears right here in the menu. So this is Firefox, uh, and it, that just shows you that you can install stuff. You know, it's if you're running this on a USB key, you'd be able to shut this down and come back, and all your stuff would still be installed, as far as I'm aware. I, like I said, I haven't been able to test that because I'm on a virtual machine, but the idea of that is really good. There's not a lot here that we can talk about because there's not a lot here. This is a probably the most minimal distribution I've literally ever tried. Actually, what we can do here is see how much memory we're using 230 yeah using 230 megabytes of, of ram that's absolutely bonkers like you're not going to get much lower than that and have an actual you know like window environment now obviously if you're just running like a, a tty you can get way lower than that but i'm not just running a tty there's actual windows being drawn on the screen and i'm pretty sure xorg takes about that much <laughs> Like, if we do, let's see if HTOP here is installed. It is installed by default. So, yeah, the vast majority of the memory that we're using here is going is XORG, just as I thought. So, this is, has 28 tasks, 32 threads. That's just, again, that's bonkers for anything. Now, a lot of that is Fluxbox. Fluxbox is always very minimal in terms of resource usage. But Debian usually isn't, right? Even De if you install Debian of any flavor, some of that resource usage that Debian or that you're seeing is always going to be at least some of the things that Debian you know uses. It, and it obviously will balloon even farther than that if you choose some kind of uh, desktop environment like GNOME or KDE or whatever. So the fact that you're seeing 28 tasks and 32 threads is kind of annoyingly <laughs> minimal. So... Let's just see. One thing I haven't seen here is a settings panel. Like, do you see a settings panel here? Archiver, I think, is just going to be like, yeah, it's going to unzip stuff. What if we right-click on this? Workspace, screen resolution. So this is how you're going to change your screen resolution. I will change that. It should be 1920 by 1080. There we go. It didn't work all that great because the, the bar went away. So you can change your keyboard layout, your workspaces, and change between workspaces and the icons for the workspaces. You can create new workspaces, and you can remove the last one. Uh, and, and then X and log out. That's literally it. That's all there is. Now, I'd, it's been a long time since I've used Fluxbox. So I don't remember if Fluxbox has its own settings panel or if the one that I vaguely remember was an MX tool. I'm pr it's probably an MX tool, I'm guessing. Seeing as how there's literally nothing else here. 
Now again, the resolution change kind of borked this up a little bit, as you can see. But that's not going to, that's either going to be because, again, this is a release candidate. Or it's because this is a virtual machine, so I'm not going to harp on them too badly about that. So let's go ahead and just wrap this up. That is Slacks. Now, out of all of the distributions that I've had in this series, the ones that I've looked at, this one's the most interesting to me. Because imagine, if you will, you wanted to always have Linux around with you. And you wanted to ensure that no matter what, it would run. Like, no matter what hardware you're on, you, you'd always have a Linux environment that has all of your applications and whatever with you in your pocket on the size of a USB key like this. What distribution are you going to choose? Now, MX has a persistent mode, but it has to be enabled. It's not enabled by default. And, again, as much as I love MX, it's still a full-fledged distribution. It has all the stuff that, has, that gives you a distribution. It has a desktop environment unless you choose the Fluxbox version which is then a window manager so you're going to have a ton of packages a ton of overhead and when I say a ton I mean I'm not saying like MX is bloated or anything I'm just saying that it uses more than 200 megabytes of RAM <laughs> out of the box now I'm not sure what the Fluxbox version of MX uses I have it's been almost a year since I've looked at it probably should look at that again but I bet that it uses at least a little bit more than this does and it for sure comes with more applications installed out of the box like damn sure it does um, it, it comes with more MX tools than Slack comes with actual programs because Slack doesn't actually come with too many programs now we didn't look at the like the file manager if we can open this up that's called Tux Commander I have never heard of Tux Commanders before. Let's go ahead and, and look at about... This is Tux Commander. But I would almost guarantee, my friends, that this is either based off of Double Commander or Crusader. Because this has the same line of buttons along the bottom as Crusader does. And if this is based on Crusader, or even Double Commander, they have my heart. <laughs> because <laughs> I love Crusader. It's my favorite Linux application. But anyways, it has that. And then we open up the terminal, or the calculator. That was the only other application that was installed and I'm guessing that this is GNOME calculator. This is GNOME calculator. This looks like the only GNOME app installed as well. So literally there's not much there, right? And that's impressive to me that the ability to install whatever you want. I mean, it's a Debian system, so you're going to have to deal with the fact that Debian doesn't have the largest repositories in the world and it's all going to be outdated. But the the idea of carrying around an entire Linux system in your pocket on one of these and it just being persistent all the time and it will run on whatever hardware you happen to encounter like that's amazing that's cool to me so that is slacks there's not a lot here if if you want to explore more about it i will link the website in the video description there were package lists there if you wanted to see what packages were installed and there were several boot options that you could use if you wanted to change the way it boots and those boot options will allow you to do several things like uh, disable the loader of certain SB modules, uh, load with no sound just in case you're loading in a place where you don't want things to, you know, have sound. Uh, you can activate the entire fresh copy to RAM and so on and so forth. There's, there's a few of them. There's also a debug option in case you're having problems. So usually in this, sis, in this series, I have a hard time liking the distribution that I've chosen to look at. And usually I spend about a half an hour looking at it and going through the various things. And while I've, the record time of this is about 20 minutes, I will say that I'm highly impressed with this. So if you have comments about Slacks or, Slacks or questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I think I'm going to go through and install this on a USB key now and just see how it runs on a USB key. I want, I'm very curious about it. And for... That to happen in this series is a milestone of in, a, in and of itself. So uh, that is it for this video. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid Dave, Devon, Patrick, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Tool, Steve A, Cybergill Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, e, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit, Six, Vlad A, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.